The Josephine Baker House by Adolf Loos might be one of the most well-known, unbuilt buildings these days. It has a complicated history, and it serves as an important touchstone for conversations around a number of complex topics related to buildings, architects, and how buildings relate to those that inhabit them. In this video, we will reconstruct this house in the computer, analyze its design, and explore it in a narrated virtual walkthrough. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Architecture with Stuart. In the last couple of decades, there's perhaps no unbuilt building that is more analyzed than the Josephine Baker House. This analysis ranges from a close reading of vision and how the viewing operates in the house or how one looks and what one looks at while inside of it, to the social political analysis of the role of architects in society at large during the modern movement, to gender and race issues, to control and objectification. So we're going to take a deep dive into this house. We're gonna model the entire thing in the computer and explore it to test just what sorts of secrets this kind of architecture holds. I hope that it can pique your interest in this important touchstone in architectural history. This video is broken into chapters to help you navigate all the different parts, including the timeline, the analysis, the 3D construction, and the walk through. There's also a link in the description below which will take you to a tab in your browser where you can explore the house yourself without any extra software needed. So without any further ado, let's dive into the Josephine Baker House beginning with the timeline. The Josephine Baker House was designed for the African-American dancer and superstar entertainer Josephine Baker on a site in Paris in 1927 by the architect Adolf Loos. The architect was born Adolf Franz Karl Victor Maria Loos in 1870 in Austria to parents that worked in the stonemasonry business. In 1893, he moved to the United States where he would stay for three years while working various jobs, one of them as part of the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago and other world expositions in St. Louis and in New York. It's when he moved back to Austria that he would devote himself to architecture. Within a group of like-minded intellectuals, he would define an attitude toward architecture that denounced extraneous decoration and ornament. Instead, he chose to deploy simple volumes of space, lined with luscious materials like expensive woods and stone. And in 1910, he would write a widely regarded essay called Ornament and Crime, where he made the connection between criminality and the motivation to create new forms of decoration and ornament. In 1924, Loos moved to Paris, and while this was a slow period for his architectural production, it's when he designed some of his most influential houses like the Moeller House and the Mueller House, which sound alike but are different. These houses exhibit Loos's strategy of arranging rooms of varying sizes and heights as blocks stacked into an intricate arrangement that he would call the Raumplan. This strategy is also present in the house for Josephine Baker, designed for the 21-year-old who had immediately captured the attention of the artistic community in Paris. Baker had just moved to Paris from New York, where she worked for a few years after a very hard life in St. Louis. She moved after both her mom and her husband discouraged her from pursuing a career in entertainment. Lois claimed to have met Baker several times and that she had actually taught him the Charleston dance. But this is disputed, and he also says that Baker claimed at a party that she was unhappy with her architect for her mansion in Paris. And Losa answered, But Josephine, did you not know that I could draw the most beautiful plan in the world? Whether because of his notorious hearing difficulties, the language barriers, or just wishful thinking, Los left the party that night thinking that Baker had commissioned him to design a house for her. The house would remain unbuilt and is decidedly different from Baker's eventual residence. Baker would go on to achieve superstar status as a performer on stage and in film. During World War II, she used her celebrity to spy on the Germans, gathering intelligence which would help win the war against the fascists. She would also make significant contributions to the civil rights movement and other important causes until her death in 1975 at age 68. The house was designed for a site in Paris at a time when Josephine Baker represented a thoroughly modern artist on the rise, while Loos was a physically ailing old man on a steep social and moral decline. Loos didn't speak any French, and so he was finding it extremely difficult to find clients in Paris. And so one idea is that maybe he embarked on this house as a theoretical exercise, mostly as a marketing strategy. The site for the house was a corner in an affluent area of Paris. It combined two houses into one, making for some in awkward interior layouts the result from maintaining some walls from the previous houses. The most striking aspect of the exterior are the alternating black and white horizontal stripes of marble. These draw your eye around the corner of the building, creating the sense of a continuous surface wrapping around the form. In addition, there are a number of associations that it draws from Italian cathedrals to prison uniforms. 
It also sets the house apart from the context through a very simple and flat graphic effect. That graphic is reserved for the top floors, while the first is inset and it's unadorned. The offset makes it look like the top is a case or a box top slipping up off of the bare interior volume below. Openings in the house are relatively small so as to maintain privacy and to limit views outward. Loos theorized that windows were primarily just for letting light in and not necessarily for uh, allowing for views out of a building. The windows in this house basically increase in size as they go up higher based on the module of the exterior stripe. But the primary unique element around which the entire house is designed is the second story pool. Los claimed that this pool would have supernatural light effects. Baker did say that she loved to swim, but with interior windows into the pool, many have speculated that this feature is more about creating views of the spectacle of the performer swimming than it is about creating an amenity for the client. The pool is capped with skylights and windows on all sides, both above and below the water. The theorist Beatrice Colomina contends that the glass and the water would also have been quite reflective, effectively making mirrors out of the water and the windows for Baker to be able to look at herself while she was in the pool. Los was also very interested in the way that light is filtered through curtains or ground glass and other projects of his. And I imagine some of the lighting effects that Los was after had to do with the reflection of the light onto some of the other surfaces into this pool space or the refraction through the water into the interior spaces that flank the pool. The other interior spaces seem arranged mostly for entertainment rather than for family life. The house appears to have two bedrooms that are very large and symmetrical, but they're connected with an opening where the two beds sit back to back. The rest of the building is all salon or dining. And while we don't really have salons anymore, they were a formal meeting space for exchange in older stately homes. Around each of these walls is a complex stack of rooms, each building in a kind of round plan fashion spiraling up toward the pool, which connects visually with the other spaces below. Adolf Loos was notoriously bad at committing ideas to paper. Part of the motivation of his Raumplan strategy had to do with making important design decisions during construction, so it's to be expected that his drawings aren't really that thorough. Also, because the house was never destined for construction, they leave a little to the imagination. Especially the house is complex as you go up. While this complexity is disguised when everything is enclosed and buttoned up, it does make 3D modeling the building a challenge. To achieve an internally consistent building from all of this is no small feat. While we created plans and sections of the house, they were not as directly useful in the construction of the model itself. This house had to be built in 3D, just like the round plan suggests, one room at a time, each stacking one on the other. It was the only way that we could figure out how this complicated stairs worked going up and down and all around. Entering the Josephine Baker house feels like we're inside of a dream or a fantasy of Adolf Loos. The house is really strange, both in its relationship to the context and with the interior. You enter into a giant, grand, and theatrical staircase. It looks like a stage that one might descend on a Broadway show while wearing a ball gown and singing with backup dancers. The space of the staircase is perforated on all sides with openings on the right, the left, and above. On the right are windows to the exterior, Above are skylights and openings to the next levels, and to the left is the first view that we have into the pool area, or down into where the staff might go. Coming up the stairs, we, we can see a spiral stair in the distance, and a main space over on the left. The pool is flanked by a gap space of hallways and stairs. Visual layering is happening everywhere. We're always looking from one space, through another, and into another. Going up the spiral stair, we enter the top level, which has a skylight and an opening that cuts all the way through the house back to the entry. That is a hallmark of Los's buildings, always catching glimpses of where you're going and where you've been. Up here are the bedrooms and the main level entry into the pool area. The pool does have an inordinate amount of windows looking into it, 
and a lot of spaces up here where it's unclear what else you would do in them. At the pool water level, there are narrow spaces all around that seem like they're only there to allow views into the pool on all sides. And then there's this small space with like a sofa facing the pool like you would find in a peep show. There are also a lot of service spaces that would presumably be for staff to support such a show, and these lead off into spaces at the lower levels and the dark narrow corridors. So I've read quite a bit about this house over the years, and while the writing does do a great job of communicating the strangeness and the concepts of this house, I can't say that it fully registered with me just how strange it is until I was able to walk around it. The Josephine Baker house is clearly one man's fantasy and fascination with the glamour and beauty of a celebrity. There's almost no other way to experience this space. This is so evident that the space feels creepy while even walking through the 3D model. I can really appreciate some of Los's other work, which might be considered true masterpieces. But this one uses the same tools of interconnected spaces, the visual continuity, and the framing to different ends than the average house design of his. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. You might also enjoy some of these other videos. And while you're at it, please consider hitting that subscribe button and we'll fill your subscription feed with weekly architectural content. See you over there.